right? So it's starting to go like, wait a minute, if I'm not my thoughts, if I'm, they're mine, what do I want to be thinking? Power to Live More with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organization, well being, energy, and resilience. I'm Joe Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I'm co-presenter and today Joy's interviewing Marnie Neer. Humour, compassion and candour are the driving forces in Marnie's work as SVP of a content and expert coach with Handle Group. She finally returned from Florida, a period in her life she likes to refer to as witness protection, to her home state of New York but shuffled around from New York to California and back again throughout her life. Marnie's professional and personal life have come full circle as well. A student of Slavic language and literature at UCLA, Marnie graduated with a BA and an understanding of Russian literature as purification through suffering. Years later, after several jobs in publicity and production, most notably for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle live tour, can't make this stuff up, she began to see that, at least in her own life, suffering was not mandatory. After marrying and giving birth to her first child, Marnie started coaching with her sister, Lauren Zander, creating the dream of who she wanted to be as not her mother. However, her work with Lauren took everything in her life to a much deeper level. More than a decade later, she is now an empty nester of two, co-author with Lauren of Maybe It's You, SVP of Content and Development, and an expert coach in the Handel Method. She has also continued her creative work, namely as co-creator of the animated series Mother Up which aired 13 episodes on Hulu and starred Eva Longoria. Serving as an expert at Campowment, blogging for the Huffington Post, as well as writing her own blog, The Sour Milf. As with every area of her life, Marnie's coaching is characterised by joyful honesty. She brings lightness and levity to her work. I have zero problem telling on myself. I use my jerk to help others see their own. Consequently, she is continually inspired by the difference that telling the truth offers to her clients. For Marnie, it's about building the muscle of personal integrity where what comes out of your mouth is what shall be. In this way, you can really go from I will go to the gym to I will win an Emmy and not just say it, but believe it and cause it. Having been married for more than 25 years, Marnie particularly enjoys working with wives, mothers and singles because she is well acquainted with the challenges they face and speaks bitch, martyr and chicken fluently. She lives in Pound Ridge, New York with her husband and FaceTimes often with her two children. She even likes them. Back to the studio. Just to let you know, this podcast has a little fruitier language than usual. And uh, if you're a regular podcast listener, I just wanted to make you aware. It's a a really interesting conversation with Marnie, though. So um, please do listen. Uh, It's not uh, anything more than colourful in the moment. Today, I'm talking with Marnie Neer of Handel Group. Welcome, Marnie. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Joe. Good to be here. So start by telling us who you are, what you do, and crucially, where you do it. Let's see. I am an executive life coach for Handel Group. I'm also the creative, the co- like creative officer at Handel Group. So I've been writing the content for years now, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been doing it for my own home in Westchester, New York, about an hour north of New York City. Lovely. So, how did that come about? Because I talk a lot. I talk to a lot of my uh, podcast guests about you know, did you want to do this all along when you were growing up and everything else? And and it's probably it's probably the 80-20 rule, probably 80% of people I talk to are doing something now completely different to what they intended and to what they did when they first started out in the, the world of work. So how what's your journey been like? Ah, it's, it's kind of a funny story. Um, let's see, how did this happen? 
Uh, never thought I'd be a life coach, though. Clearly, I'm opinionated, like fixing people, like it's in our nature. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> right? I'm, Tell people what to do, sure. Okay, but it wasn't my thing. My, I went to school, I went to a, a university at UCLA. I studied Russian literature, of all things. Uh, so I like really just walked around campus smoking cigarettes and reading everything I wanted to read. <laughs> so that was that. Was that. Uh, yeah. It came out of school, um, really was picking my jobs based on where I could smoke, where I could possibly get laid easiest. <laughs> <laughs> like my priorities were really, you know, clear, but maybe skewed. Okay. But I really wanted to dress the way I wanted to dress and, uh, and smoke cigarettes and get like, uh, so that brought me to music, publicity, the land of that. Yeah. Uh, eventually I worked for the Moscow circus, which was an interesting part, uh, for a producer there and was an executive assistant for a long time. Uh, but was never really career focused. It was more, um, where could I have fun? Yeah. And uh, eventually met my husband, quit working for uh, music and uh, moved to the suburbs of Connecticut at that time and started just quickly mutating into my own mother, period. <laughs> right. Was that a good thing or not? <laughs> it was not a good thing. Like, you know, it was like, you know, destiny and probably most of our destiny if you don't intervene. Right. Uh, but definitely noticed it quickly, had my first child, was trying to get pregnant with my second, having issues with that. So I was in like fertility stuff. And uh, that's when I finally let my baby sister, who was a, started her own life coaching company, uh, coach me. Right. So I let her in and I was like, fine. <laughs> like fine like do something do something I don't want to really go back to work but I really I'm not doing so great at this motherhood thing a lot like I need to do something else yeah. with this or I'm gonna go crazy and just suck <laughs> so, uh -huh. so that's when she intervened and started using the handle method on me and we made a deal of if she gets me my dream whatever it was um I I had to pay it forward yeah. So I'd have to do everything she taught me with others. So I'd have to go coach if she got me what I wanted. And so mm -hmm. I said, so I made the deal of fine, <laughs> like <laughs> get me my dream and will. And that's really when we started did, working together. So question, did you make the, the deal thinking it would never happen? <laughs> I don't know. Like it did sound like a bad deal, right? Because like the idea of, uh, getting out of myself and helping others and using what I like, 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 I, I think I always got off on like outing my own asshole for others, like yeah. for a better cause, right? You're like, okay, I can admit I'm a jerk here, 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 and here, right? Mm -hmm. Could I, could I help people get the joke if I got it, right? Yeah. So the, the helping people get the dark jokes was always part, like see Russian literature, like it was always there. Yeah. <laughs> right. My dark sense of humor. So I think I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I mean, maybe there was part of like, what's my dream and what are you going to get me to realize? And so she really had me start writing what my dream career would be. Right. If I, I like it was easy. I knew I didn't want to just be uh, like an at home mom. Like that wasn't enough. I wanted more. But I like wasn't really clear about what it was I wanted to do. And uh, so she had me write out my dream and you know possible options. And really it was like a funny time because it was right at the time when um, eight, like Sex in the City on TV, like with Sarah yeah. Jessica Parker, like just started, right? <laughs> and that was like, uh, it was a long time ago and you know, there's much better TV on now, but back then <laughs> that was like a, whoa, what is this? Yeah. This is fun. Um, and so I really like wanted that the fictitious job <laughs> of like, of uh, Carrie Brent, whatever I had her, like she was a columnist and got to just write a sex and dating column looked like such a fun gig. I was like, I want her gig. I'm not going to write about sex, obviously, <laughs> please. I'll, I'll spare people that, but I could go make fun of motherhood. Yeah. And make fun of, you know, the suburb I was in and life with kids and that sort of shitty pro bono gig right, that I was clearly failing at. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I just thought that would be fun. And so that was my dream. I was like, fine, I want to be a columnist. And, uh, and it happened. Like, it really was like two phone calls later. I had like a column in the Westport News. And then all of a sudden we're like, wow, someone had an idea that I should turn it into a TV show. And then that happened, right? I mean, it was a long process. It was a lot of crying and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and my sister kicking me out, you know, getting me out of the puddle and up again, up again. But really eight years later, I had a show on Hulu, um, 13 episodes, Eva Longoria played my voice and it happened. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, fuck, right? So like I owed, I owed. <laughs> so yeah, really not what you planned <laughs> when you were at school. No, but like, then... <laughs> I really did. Like, you know, but like I can look back, Joe, and go like, oh God, right? Like there I was, I like oddly picked UCLA. Turns out I want to write TV shows, right? Like I was that close to my dream and an easy. Yeah. Like yeah. if I just made that right turn yeah. to TV and could get out of my own shit and not just want to like commiserate with 19th century Russians, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, one wants to smoke and commiserate, right? And the yeah. other one could have like actually yeah. picked her, like made my dream easier and quicker. Yeah. I um, eventually got there, you know, I'm, but it's I'm sort of reflecting as you've sort of implied that, um, quite what you imagined you were going to do with Russian 19th century um, literature anyway for a career <laughs> was, was, pro- was pro- probably part of it too. So uh, Right. It yeah. was, yes. Right. Like it was there. Like the inside joke was there and why I liked it and what I got to read and what I was learning yeah. from reading it or why I related to it yeah. and yeah. what I could use for my future writing for yeah. shit sure was there. But like there could have been a, you know, yeah. a quick, a quicker turn. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So so things happened, you 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 sort of got where you wanted to get, you you your sister helped you and then then you had to pay it back. So what then happened? Yes. <laughs> uh during this time was uh, I was learning to coach. So she like coaches at Handel Group have to go through the entire method, right? Like you have to get yourself happy in your own life in order to coach other people, right? Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to live a perfect life. You just have to walk the talk and be able to talk about when you trip and fall. Yeah. Right. Because you're gonna. So uh, so everything she made me do, I make my clients do or now I write about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was fun for me. Right. So it's like, oh, right. So I can speak to uh, people that are, you know, chicken shits in their life about their career or pretend like they don't know what it is, but they just don't want to say it because I'll have to go do it. Yeah. Right. So the, the minute I was willing to even admit Carrie Bradshaw. (laughs) <laughs> you know, fake you know what I mean I was like oh I'd like to be a Darren Star character right like it was was yeah. the minute I had to start writing calling everything that was scary mm-hmm. right so I the fun for me is I get to go be a Pied Piper as a coach of come on here's a conversation I had to have with my husband here's a conversation I had with my tween asshole daughter here's mm-hmm. <laughs> like everything I've been through I use to coach and most of my clients uh, you know, magically, organically end up being fellow hostile housewife chicken chips. <laughs> you know, you're like, ah, I speak that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, that was, I, I guess, going to be one of my questions that you're, you've got clearly got a very strong personality. Um, uh, and I guess you're probably not for everyone. Some people will see this as, as really, um, a great challenge that they need and I guess some people would probably run a mile from being challenged in such a way is that is that fair (laughs) to say completely I was like I was like oh you're flirting (laughs) I'm not for everyone (laughs) I'm like that's like a good thing like that has turned into like a compliment you know yeah yeah. um it's true like here's the good news about handle group is we've got like a a wide variety of coaches yeah yeah. look we're still going to hold you to account, Mm -hmm. right? It's just the method. Like we are not going to go like, we're not therapists. We're not like, there are sweeter than me for sure. And that will take a slower path, but the same road is going to go to maybe it's you, right? And and can you find out that that's good news? That it's not just the economy, just your mother-in-law, just your husband, just your kids, right? It's like, it's so much more fun to find your own fingerprints everywhere. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the method. Right. So yes, it takes 
a type that actually finds that like refreshing mm -hmm. and empowering, right? Yeah. Of let's go get your dreams. What's in your way? Uh, you. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, yay. All right. Where am I a jerk? Where are my like dark traits that don't work about me that I want to change? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so tell me more about about the method, because as you've just said, I, as I as I surmised, you have a whole range of, of different styles within the organization, but you're using the same method, which you said that you needed to to go through yourself as well as then be able to work with other people with. Um, what are the principles? Tell us more about that that method. Yes. Um, well, it's a method my sister, Lauren, created and then developed and taught it at MIT and NYU and Columbia. Like, so she really has been doing it for 20 years. I've been like figuring out how yeah. to take a human from point A to Z. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And have it be a lasting change. Not like a great podcast you listen to that lasts, you know. Right. Yeah. It's like, ooh, how do you cause lasting change? Uh -huh. So uh, there's definitely, you know, we have an online course called interview that we take you through the it's like 12 to 15 modules depends on which interview you do there's like interview career and interview love and interview life but right. in interview life our like basic core is we first module one is we're getting you to start admitting your dreams right and not just your dream like your career dream that too but dreams in 12 different areas of your life mm -hmm. because most of us really live in compartments, right? Yeah. Of like, let me just care about love and career or just career money, right? Or just your body, I'll just go deal with here. But we don't realize that if any of the areas sucks, right? It's got to leak into the others. Yes. Right? It's got to, right? Even 20 pounds you need to lose, it still leaks into who you are at work. Yeah. Right? Or who you are in bed or who you are, like anywhere. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's like hard... So we deal, we make you go dream in 12 different areas. And that's probably one of our toughest assignments. Yeah. Right. It's a bummer. It's like module one. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Can you get through it? Right. But what you find, which is so fascinating and incriminating, is how much we humans suck at dreaming. Yes. Yes. Right. Like if you gave your kid go dream, right, She'd, he would like be prolific. Right. Yeah. Like they know exactly the size house. Is, you know what I mean? Yeah, the younger yeah. they are, the wider, more outrageous, more fun their dreams are. Yeah. Right. As you get older, you only dream what you think you can have. Absolutely. We, we self-edit massively, don't we? Oh, my God. We suck. And then the most fascinating and fun part for me as a writer and a coach is like reading a person's first assignment. Yeah. Like how mean and stingy we are. <laughs> to ourselves in those dreams like you have no idea like you and then the awesome part is you have no idea right so that when you write your dreams and you finally get them all out right and then we're like let's read them out loud yeah <laughs> right and the first take if you haven't done a lot of work on yourself is alarming yeah right because yeah. you're like hoping you're you know the per you fall in love and they don't cheat they're emotionally stable <laughs> they have their own friends, right? But like yeah. what you're willing, it's just gross, right? Like you're just, you're talking about yesterday in your dream today. Yes, yes. Right? And you don't realize it and you don't realize how mean you are, right? You're like, my triceps don't jiggle, right? <laughs> I can see my toes, right? <laughs> and you're like, really? That's as good as it gets. <laughs> right. So it's really hard to go write your like what a nine, 10 would be in your life. You don't even know yeah. you're aiming. You're aiming for six. Yes. Yeah. It is interesting when I talk to people about getting to live more, which is part of my sort of philosophy, which I talk about getting to do more of the things you want to do and less of the stuff that you don't want to do. Often, if you talk about, you know, that day when you have that opportunity, which I'm going to ask you about later, people don't actually know what they would do in just a day where they you know, get to live more. And that's just a day. And you think, you know, if you compare that to your whole life, you can see why we're sort of not able to think more expansively about what we want to do. Yeah. And it, like, it's not, you know, the, the fun to start looking at is it's not as sad, like, and, you know, scored by a violin as we want to play it. <laughs> 
right? Yeah. It's more sneaky because right. if you had like, because if you had to dream it or say, this is what I want, Joe, in a day, you'd have to do something about it, right? You'd have to say a lot more no's. You'd have to get honest over here. You'd have to quit. You'd have to, right? Mm -hmm. right? There's like so much more we'd have to go do that we don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it, it's, it's fascinating, right? So that's module one is we got you dreaming. Then we have you writing, like if that's your dream, here, this is your 910, what's your current rating? Yeah. Compared to that and why? Mm -hmm. Right. And over in that section, you're you are prolific. <laughs> OK, you're yeah. like, it's so much easier to write why I can't have that than write what I want. Yes. So then we're starting to just kind of break down the species. You're like, can you see? Can you see how mean you are? Can you see in this paragraph of why you can't have it? This is where all your bullshit excuses live. This is where your crappy theories live. Mm -hmm. This is where we distinguish different voices in your head, your inner dialogue, and we call it like your chicken, your brat, and your weather reporter, <laughs> right? Voice of fear, voice of I don't wanna, right? You're not the boss of me, <laughs> that <laughs> one. And then the weather reporter that reports about your life, like you have nothing to do with it, right? Like just like it rains in Seattle, you're a procrastinator and have always been. You're not a morning person, uh -huh. right? That's where that lives. So we have you start to hear those voices so you could like distinguish them as they're not really you. They're just your inner dialogue that you haven't curated. Yeah. That work for you to get out of uh, living your dream life and getting busy and doing mm -hmm. scarier things than you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And not failing. Right. We're so busy not failing that we just don't realize like you can't fucking have your dream if you're not going for it and possibly failing all the time. Yeah. So that's like module one and two and three is called like, maybe it's you, right? So now you're like rolling up your sleeves and go, oh my God, where should I get really suspicious of myself? What yeah. have I been busy doing that has nothing to do with living true to my dream? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now after we go there, we start dealing with some of your negative and positive traits. Obviously, we don't have to go digging really into your positive ones. Rock on. <laughs> You know, right. But the ones, your negative ones that you got from your mom and dad. Yeah. Right. Or you did your version of them or not them. We have you start playing with and naming because we really just want you to befriend your dark side like it's going nowhere. Yeah. So we need to befriend it, name it, have fun calling it out, name it something goofy, even get proud of catching it. Because most of us walk around feeling so guilty about being like the shit we don't want to be, as opposed to you're know, like, oh, there's mean motherfucker. <laughs> there she is. There's sweet and sour chicken, right? Like I've got traits. Yeah. But the minute you can have them, they don't necessarily have you. Yeah. So that's like a fun module of starting to name them. We start to teach you how to leash them and put in the right promises and consequences, which is a very big part of our method, which is we're like, fuck feeling bad. We're not interested in guilt. Like we do enough of that. Yeah. We're really out to how do you keep a promise that's gonna forward your dream. And if you're not, if you don't keep it, forget feeling guilty, just pay a self-imposed consequence. Come up with one. Because the consequence of just gaining weight, not living true to your dream, isn't enough. Or you'd be doing things differently. Yeah. Right? So now you're just like, what's a good promise? What's a good consequence? The truth is that how I had my TV show actually turn out is I needed a promise to write every day. And if I didn't write two hours in the morning every day, yeah. I lost my glass of wine at night. <laughs> I can see how that would work. <laughs> Right? Like there's like everyone's got a vice that they'll fight harder for than their dream. It's a bummer. <laughs> I like wish I cared more about my dream than that five o'clock glass of wine, but I really like it. At 4 30, my body's like, what? it's almost time. I put sugar. Right? So like I fucking sold my TV show for my wine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's like welcome to the species. Like we will fight for our cream and our coffee more than our marriage. Yeah. <laughs> it's just true. Mm -hmm. So that's a big part of our method, method, right? And that's what we call like the secret sauce to happiness is like, like I swear 
every human, we're not that complicated. You're like three to five kept promises away from being fucking happy. Like we're not that tricky. Yeah. Of what's it going to take. So where are we in our, in our process now? <laughs> all right. So we're now in like, we've gone through about four modules, right? You're yeah. now getting, we've done your traits. You are now, you've done your promises and consequences. You even have a promise tracker now in interview that you could go put your promises. You get a buddy because the truth is we still, as much as we, even when you find out like, oh my God, I'm three to five promises away from being happy. You're mm -hmm. like, you're still, have you met the species? We don't keep our promises to ourselves. We're no. not that good at it. We suck. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. your promises to your kids, you're like, you're not gonna just fuck with them. Mm -hmm. You know, not really, right? You're not like, I'll pick you up at three unless I don't feel like it. <laughs> yeah. Unless I have unless I have that emails come in, right? But if it comes to like working out, yes, right. If I all of a sudden go into my emails, I could be in my running shoes all day and still never run. Yeah. Barely walk. Okay. Yeah. So we will throw out our happiness and sell out on it in a heartbeat. So the only way is to keep promises, consequence, and have an accountability buddy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that will hold you to it so that you're not left to your own devices because left to your own devices, you'll blame it was the wrong promise. You'll not keep the consequence. You'll feel a little guilty and that's it. Like that's the human form, you know, good human formula. As long as you feel guilty and have a good excuse, you're out of there. Mm -hmm. I was a girl, I feel really bad. I must be a nice human. <laughs> it's no, you're just full of shit. So a, bu a buddy helps. So that we've got you there. We yeah. then have you uh, start to keep um, for two weeks a thought log. Okay. Because you need to start hearing what your head does for a living. <laughs> right. So the minute I lose wine, because I didn't write every day, right? So the minute I lose wine, you know what my head starts doing? I didn't say beer. <laughs> Uh -huh. I love, I love, I love, I love. Right, like that's what that head starts doing. Like yeah. it wants to like have a workaround. Okay, so it's yeah. kind of fun to start hearing it. It's a little upsetting to find out how mean you are and critical of others and critical of yourself and you get to hear what your head does. The good news is we're starting again to separate you from the head you call home. Because most of us really think that that noise and talking is like the real us. Hmm. or even a decent advisor, <laughs> right? You're like, don't talk to them. Don't tell them the truth. It'll hurt their feelings. Yeah. Here's what they're going to say, right? Like our head thinks it's fucking psychic, hmm. right? But it doesn't go like, go for your dream, go for your dream, do it anyway. It doesn't root for your dream. It roots for your safety, Right, go home, watch Netflix. It doesn't matter. They're not gonna, they're gonna fire you if you say you're gonna have a big fight. This is what they're gonna say here. They'll never forgive me for this. Like it, your head is just talking you out of discomfort. Yeah. Right. So we have you working on that and starting to hear the different things your head does so that you could again start to curate your own thoughts. Right? Like I don't know that it's like 85% of those are negative that's going on in there. And 95% are the day before, and this was even before the pandemic. I can only imagine the stats have gotten worse. Mm. Right? So it's starting to go like, wait a minute, if I'm not my thoughts, if they're mine, what do I want to be thinking? Yeah. Awesome. Much better, right? What bad trait do I want to replace? What do I want to be thinking? Because we're all like on the road to cleaning up all your stuff so that you could just fucking dream and mm. manifest and tell your head to shut up when it's not rooting for the right team. Yeah. Right? Cause it's always like those voices are never going away. The minute fear, the minute your dream gets bigger, right? Like, so you fulfill this dream, now what? Right? It's always gonna come back. It's just who, whether you're gonna like be able to handle the dial of your traits. <laughs> you're like, can I turn it down? Uh huh. Right, or not. So now we have you start also dealing with some of your past. Right, because most of us have, ha like we call them hauntings. Like you have memories from your past that they, you can't seem to shake. Yeah. Right, they're not a gazillion. You've got like a good 15, <laughs> right? I bet you've never, like it's when your mother said this or when you got fired from this job or like you're holding on to a bunch. And the uh, accusation is that you're holding on to them and can't just flush them. You know what I mean? Our parents said a gazillion mean things. 
yeah. and stupid things. How come I remember these two? Mm-hmm. Right? Like they said so many stupid things. <laughs> Right, <laughs> but these two, right? I'm gonna hold on to and suffer over forever and bring up whenever I need. So we're like, why? Let's go looking at why. And then uh, the accusation is that the reason why you won't let go of them is because you're telling them there's a lie in them. Yeah, like you're not telling them accurately, or you haven't learned the right lesson from them. So you're still using them, right? You haven't just flushed them in. Okay, dad said stupid things. Okay, you just haven't flushed them. Okay, the reason why I really got fired is this. Mm -hmm. And here's what I didn't say, didn't do, didn't this. It doesn't mean take all fault, but it's like, what didn't you learn? Because the minute you learn the right lesson, it it doesn't stay in the back of your fridge anymore. Yeah, yeah. Right? You got to get suspicious of what's still back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a heavy module, but really awesome when you start to go deal with your hauntings and start to unravel them and poke holes in them and go ask the right questions or go search out that person and really ask what happened versus what you think happened. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember when, um, you know, I like my memory of my past is like my mother and I used to like battle all the fucking time. Right. Like I can, I can still hear her coming up at the steps two by two coming after me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like I like remember, I remember the like bite marks in the soap. Okay. Right. I was like, she's a fucking nut. And so that's like my story about my mom and childhood. Right. And then I remember how like doing this work with my sister and my sister's my younger sister. So she like, by the time, like she was too young to remember the soap stories. And by the time my parents got to her, my mother was like, like, you know, left her with a babysitter. She was so done with children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but my sister's like, Marty, really? All the time you used to fight all the time. She used to hit you all the time. Like, what's this? What? Like, really? All the time? How often? She just asked like an innocent, how often? Yes. And I'm like, no, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and she's and she's like, go call Matt yeah. or Beth. Like, go call them. Go find out. Because I don't remember. I don't know. Go find out. Yeah. And so I called my brother because I thought he would more like align with my story. <laughs> Yeah. So I called him and he's like, oh, I don't know, Marty, like maybe once a month, if even. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now I mean like right? Like my story skewed. Yes. Right? Really, I was in like every day, every other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how my head wanted to tell that sad story. Yeah. Doesn't mean my mother was great. She was a fucking over the edge. <laughs> That's her. But the way I wanted to tell it and how it was going down wasn't a fair telling. Mm -hmm. So the minute my sister like questioned that and had me go question was the minute like we call it an unraveling. Like it's like taking a thread out of a sweater. Here, let me just pull this. (laughs) Because like it started to unravel my whole poor Marnie story. Yes. Yes. Um, how often, what? So it was, it's really a fascinating process of can you tell a story straight or more balanced? Yes. Doesn't mean erase what my mom did, but can I tell it more balanced? Because it isn't being told fairly. Mm-hmm. And that's why it stays in my repertoire. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an awesome module and a really great experience to go be able to put your past like in the right chapter and back behind you really and be able to tell the story proudly yes of the retail yeah from an from an author's perspective versus a victim's perspective where most of us will tell those stories mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that's that's a deep and awesome module we then go into something much lighter <laughs> not, really. <laughs> not really we go into your lying like lie list okay Okay, of every which way, every variety of lie you tell or have told in your whole like life, right? Like, and so, and we call omissions lying. Okay. So things you don't, right? So a list of things you didn't say and to whom, right? Or where, you know, whatever. You cheated in high school on this test or whatever. And here's your drug list. <laughs> here's your this list. Like, here's who doesn't know what. And um, because most of us really walk around um, with our own scarlet letter about what we've done, embarrassed about it, not proud of it, and not just owning and cleaning it up with whoever you need to go clean it up with. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And because the truth is, if you have lies, they have lies. Like, it's not like, oh, my God. And we don't have it's how dare you bad, right? We have you're just human, right? There's no light without dark. So can we just like own our freaking dark side? Can you get freed up and just be able to tell everything mm -hmm. without embarrassment, shame and all the shit we do to it? Okay, so yeah. that's lying and really having you go through that and really having you like whatever, call that ex-girlfriend <laughs> and yeah. tell them this and apologize for it and make those phone calls, uh -huh. right? How, look, because however many you're willing to make is the freer you'll get about who you are and just owning your good and bad. Yeah. Right, and then there is no phone call, no this, no Facebook, no nothing that haunts you anymore. You're just your own free, freak flag flying, cute human. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then that's what, and then so, like, once you've finished all that, now we're start. like, now you can see, like, we're clearly, re like, ready to go create who you want to go, like, be today. Yeah. And write your manifesto or your mission statement, or we call it your I am statement of who are you. And where now are we going? We where are we in sort of time scales for this? Because this sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it, look, it, like, really, people could get this done in, you know, six months. And, like, it just depends who you are. Yeah. It could take you, uh, our new CMO, two years it took her. But yeah. it was because she was on that, like, kind of slowish ride. Uh -huh. But sometimes it really takes, if you wanted to become a hands on group coach, it could, like, we say two years. Yeah, yeah. But you, could you do it in six months? Could you really go this, this, and this? And it's like, ideally, you're going in that order. But the truth is, we could get a client and go like, holy fuck, let's just hit your hauntings first. Yeah. Right? Like, you have to go do triage, because <laughs> you could hear what's like killing them. Mm -hmm. And not like why you can't even dream is because you've got this lie list on your and you're not forgiving yourself. Yeah. So like, there's a level at which your coach knows what you should go do, right? Yes. And how to go find where most of your cavities live so yeah. we could just go deal with them. So it, it really can be done in six months, depending on how much of an A student you are, because yeah. it really yeah. could just listen to a module, just do your assignment. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to take this much. It's just how resistant, like how long is it going to take you to get your true lie list up there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Could you really go like rock on? Let me just fess it all, or is it like <laughs> pulling mm. teeth? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so that's really—I don't think I missed any. There's there's laundry lists on people and how to go have a hard conversation because we teach you how to go. Like we don't just send you to go clean up a lie without knowing how to have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because we don't just send you to go blow up your life. That is not no. our intent <laughs> at all. Yeah, that'd be a bit counterproductive, right. wouldn't it? Right. No. So it really is we teach you. So every module takes you that way. Yeah. Like yeah. step yeah. by step by step. How do you go from here to just free to be you? Yeah, yeah. And what does that look like for you in terms of how you work with people? So they're working through this whole process. Um, what do your days look like? Um, I don't have a ton of clients anymore because I really am writing. All you know, the method and interview. So I wrote interview with my sister. So again, it's like her method, and then I turns out I'm a writer. Right? Yeah. So eventually we're like, oh, we like finally put it together that I'm a coach and a writer. I should be one writing all this for her. Mm -hmm. But it really it took us a couple of years to to figure that out. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of clients. Uh, you know, they they're in interview, so we really use interview as our textbook. Yeah. Right, you're like, all right, go do my, go listen to module one, go do the assignment, bring it with you for yeah. our session. Right, so interview you could do by yourself. Uh huh. It comes with a free master class, so you really like get to go in a group where a coach, I lead the loved one sometimes, takes you through modules one to four in a group. So you go do the homework, you could read your dreams, so you could get coaching. You're not alone doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So it it comes with one free private coaching session. So you can get a flavor for what it's like to be one on one if you're not the group kind of person. Yeah. And then it chucks you into a group that you could, you know, listen, participate, do it at your own speed. 
Yeah. Uh, so I, my day looks like if I have a client, they've done their assignment, I've read their assignment, uh, I have them have it because I really like to hear it and like them to hear it so I can teach them what I hear so they could start to do it by themselves and hear what I hear. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going through it. So we're going through their hauntings, we're going through whatever we're up to. Yeah. Yeah. And so given you're doing that, you're working with some people, you're, you're writing, um, you've got your five o'clock wine. <laughs> <laughs> how do, how do you get done what you get done you know using the wine probably as the incentive but <laughs> just get to the finish line now, the funniest part about the wine is like when covid started like it all it all hell broke loose in march last march uh, yeah. we started to like how are we going to save our people right and so we started to offer free community calls so Lori Gerber, our coach, did like the 9 a.m. and I did the 5 p.m. every day for a lot of months. We were doing that of just let's let's get their bat, like let's handle them and take yeah. care of everybody. Eventually we like wound that down. So she just does Monday mornings at nine and I do Friday at five. Yeah. So we just got their week, but it's free. And then I remember like I was like, Lauren to my sister, I was like, I'll do it, except you're fucking with my five o'clock wine. <laughs> Right, like I don't drink and coach. Like I, I can't. I know that's illegal, right? So what? And she's like, "My one, it's a free call. Two, we're calling it wine down, right? Like you really, everyone can bring the glass of wine. Can you just be you?" <laughs> so my Friday, I'm allowed my glass of wine, but I like it. Turns out it's just a joke because I like I'm too busy talking to drink. <laughs> like it's only if I have a guest can I have like a sip or two, but uh. Look, I, I'm a morning person, I really, which is a very good theory for me. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a good one. It's a good weather report. Uh, so I really still have my promise because if you're looking like Marty, what are your three to five that keep you happy? Yeah. Um, I have to I have to write my own stuff, even if my stuff ends up sounding a lot like Handel stuff, right? Even I'm working on a play right now that um, it can't help but have method in it. Uh-huh. Uh, Cause it's all, I, it's how my head works now. Um, but I have to write that. So I'm working on a screenplay and a play. Uh, I have to work on that for at least an hour every morning. Because what happens is if I don't, I start to hate on Handel work. Right. Right. I start to go martyry about it. Like, oh, what about me? Yeah. <laughs> I, but I don't get the bad joke that it's me who threw it out first. Cause the, my stuff is actually harder to write for me than Handel. Yes. Yeah. So if I go straight to Handel and blame Handel, I like don't catch a whiff mm -hmm. of that is my chicken that doesn't want to go write comedy, which is and dialogue, which is so much harder for me. Yes. Yeah. And scarier. Scarier. It's so much more intimate, right? Yeah. This has feelings. This is like straight up method. I got this. Yeah. So um, so I have to write every morning, which makes me a much more pleasant uh chief creative officer, mother, yep. wife. <laughs> like it just makes me a better human if I take care of me first. Yes, yeah. So I work out, I have a personal trainer, I, ha I go for a walk when I'm not, like there's like rules to keep me nice. <laughs> <laughs> so right? You're like, oh, it's right, yeah. exercise. It's right and exercise and make sure I'm keeping my sex promise with my husband or I, like we start to hate each other. Yeah, yeah. It's not that much harder. Like, it, I don't think I have much more than that, right? Yeah. And finish when I finish, mm -hmm. right? If I like wanted my glass of wine at five, I like, I, look, I lose my wine still to this day if I haven't written. <laughs> it yeah. just, it's the, it's the way to keep me clean. Yeah. Is I need to dangle the carrot. I wish it weren't so. I've been coaching for 20 years and I still need a carrot. And I guess once you found the thing that works, then keep going with it. <laughs> you have, like human beings, to look, there's certain promises like I don't need anymore, right? Like I'm shallow enough to really never need, I eat well and stay thin. I'm shallow, like it's, it's a given, okay? Mm -hmm. I care too much. Yeah. There are certain ones where I can be a chicken shit, right? Like where my chicken lives that I have to put the right promise and a right consequence in. Look, it's not like sex with my husband is fun, but every time he's like, you want to, my asshole is like, nah. <laughs> TV, Netflix, right? Like, where are they, right? <laughs> We're watching, you know, something dark and great. Like, so the level at which I could sell out on my relationship 
in a heartbeat if I don't have a promise. Yeah. And I'm still amazed. Look, it's the same as exercise, right? I never, I'm like, wow, I shouldn't have exercised today. But this morning at 4 a.m. when my husband's like, you're coming for a walk with us? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's yeah. done. Right? Like my first response out of the gate is not my higher self. Yeah. So the only way to force higher self in areas where you need that, not every area you need it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Then you need a promise and a consequence and everyone in your life to know. Yes. Yeah. Some accounts. Because you won't. Yeah. Because you yeah. just won't do it. You yeah. won't do it. You'll have a good excuse. You'll have a, you know, my head wants to go, Marnie, you should write instead, instead of that walk. It wants to sell out on yeah. the walk or sell out on the writing. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what, what I'm doing. Yeah. 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 So just moving on to the last couple of questions then. Firstly, what about those days where it all goes horribly wrong, where you, things don't work as they're supposed to how do you deal with those days um here's like a really good practice there's like i have two really good practices on how to deal with yourself okay on days that whatever whatever the phone call comes in you get one of those your kid's crying and you now want to like get on that train yeah okay of bad thoughts bad this worry and fuck everything else uh every morning I have to send my sister, I have another sister, my negative inner dialogue. Yeah. Okay? So I have to like almost, we call it a purge. It's like vomiting stream of consciousness, what your head is doing. Oh, it's fucking Monday again. I have 12 meetings. How am I going to get anything done? <laughs> so if you call me, I'm worried about her now. Right? Yeah. Like I'm responsible for getting what's in here out of here. Yeah. Okay. Because anything that stays in your head starts to look for proof. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of our like favorite mantras these days is like, what you believe you prove. Right. Okay. So watch yeah. what you're thinking, watch what you're believing, because even if it's shit, you're commit like human beings are committed to being right. No matter what. Yeah. Even if it's like, my father doesn't love me. Okay, even my mother-in-law is an asshole, right? And now every phone call is colored by that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, my child's fucked, right? Like any of that, right? You have to get out mm -hmm. because you don't want to be thinking it because you're going to be proving it and acting upon and results don't lie. So if I get my negative inner dialogue out and after you write your bleh, okay, yeah, you're, you're writing it with the intent to flush it. <laughs> you're not yeah. writing it with like, you're right, money, the world sucks, humanity sucks, fuck <laughs> up, right? You're not writing for, you're not sending it to someone that's going to buy what you're selling. No, no, no. Okay? Yeah. okay, so I write that. And then what you have to do is write a talk back, which is like hire your higher self to now go talk to what your brain was just, your head was just saying. Yeah. Marty, that's not true. You just need to write. It's going to be okay. Sophie's going to be okay. You know it. This is her lane. She needs to learn her own lessons. Uh, just get writing. It's going to be okay. Like whatever you need, whatever you'd say to your best friends to talk them off a ledge and mean it. Yeah. You need to do that to you, which most of us don't. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I do every morning, even if I don't have a lot. It's just like the want to out it as yeah. dark as it fucking is. Yeah. Most of us don't want to say what's really there. <laughs> yes. Right? Yeah. And right? yeah. you're going to want to edit it. You're going to want to be like, I don't think she's so nice. Right? Like, you're not going to go, I think she's a dumb bitch. I'm wearing too much makeup. You're not going to say any of that. Okay. So you have to be willing to really meet that dark yuck. Yeah. Right? Because the only way you can meet that dark yuck and talk back to it is the only way you're going to get free uh -huh. to really manifest. And then the next thing we have you do, besides just get rid of that to your buddy and talk back to it, is we have you do what we call a design day, like a DD, we call them. So to my buddy and a group of people, I probably do it to a good, the entire marketing department and the executive department at Handel and a couple extra friends that want to know how my day is going to go and how, I'm, how I am is we design our day. So before your day is manifesting, before your day even happens, you write how it went. Yeah. 
Okay. So you're like causing your day versus I hope it turns out. Yes. Most yeah. of us are live by default. We're hoping, right? Toy, toy, toy. This call, this call doesn't come in. I hope it, I hope it doesn't, whatever. We're in hope, fingers crossed, not yeah. causing anything, but not getting that we're not manifest manifesting, we're mana fucking. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I design my day to a group of people and say what's going to happen. And in that is not just to-do lists. It has some to-dos, but it really is to be used. Oh my God, I'm a genius. Mm -hmm. Team, mm -hmm. team is adorable. Finish yeah. the blog. Magical emails come in unexpected money, like whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Okay. And I send that by, I think it's 9am these days, 9am during the week to yeah. 15 people. And at the end of the day, I go back to it and I say next to each thing, how it went. I don't put excuses. I don't do stories, you know, unless it's a great magical story, but I'll go, you know what I mean? Blog done. No. <laughs> Yeah. Magical emails in. Yes. One. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right. So that my world of people know how I did or didn't do. And I know how I did or didn't do in causation. Yes. And those two practices uh, keep me in charge of my life versus life happening to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you don't, life will, just happens. Yes. Right. And we just bounce and are a reaction to shit that's happening. Mm -hmm. versus can I be the director of my life? Like, can yeah. I direct it? And yeah. then you get to see how magical you actually are. Yes. Or yeah. <laughs> yeah, or not. So, um, or not. Yeah, cool. Um, and so the last question then is, I touched on it earlier, which is that whole thing about on those days where you get to live more and that's where you get to do more of what you want to do and less of what you don't want to do, what do those days look like for you? Um... You know, the trip, look, I'm really lucky because I've got a good gig, <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm sure I've earned it, right? Is the, uh, I, I have to design my day, right? So besides that I'm designing my day, I really am in my calendar putting what's going to happen today. So I'm responsible. I'm not hoping things happen. I really set a time from 12 to one, I'm working on the block. Yeah. And I'm not really allowed to go push that unless, right, I can push it once if I get an emergency call or whatever, or there's, you know, a fire. Yeah, yeah. But I know, right, and I, like, I'm, I'm a visual person, so I also like to have, like, I have a big whiteboard over here of what I want to happen or fun ideas uh -huh. that I have. And I get to go play all day. So I'm really, like, my job is writing all day long when I'm not on phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. With a bunch of people I really like. Yeah. So I like I'm already living very true. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. I have to remember, like when I don't go into my trait of mean martyr fucker, or I have to do everything for you. And I'm really taking care of me, too. And yeah. designing my life. You know, tomorrow I decided and this is like a rarity for me. Like I have to like step out of my own box. I go, oh, my God, tomorrow I'm going to go with the person I'm writing the screenplay, I'm going to go to her house. And instead of just doing once a week for an hour, I'm going to go spend five hours with her. Yeah. And really knock out some of the stuff that's taking us too long. Mm -hmm. But I swear I had to like get out of my head for, can I do that during the work week? Is it work? And I was like, wait a minute, hands on part of the screenplay. <laughs> yes. Yes. Like yeah, no yeah. one, no one but me would stop me from doing that. Like no one that I work for would think that was me being slippery, <laughs> except for me. That is, that's it. Like you know, it's like a scary move to go do. It's really yeah. ballsy. But because I'm in a promise, also every day of doing bold, out of my box, nauseating moves, mm -hmm. like make myself nauseous daily for me. Yeah. Because I'm a martyr and I'll sell out me for you and then hate you later. <laughs> it's not it's not as nice as it seems. Right? <laughs> it seems like martyr is like nice. It's not. Yes. Because yeah. I'm good at the minute you don't appreciate me, you're yeah. dead. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And and that's the sport most of us martyrs are in. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like don't ask for more than I give. God, do you know how much I sold out? Answer they don't. Yeah. So it's like such a setup for them to not appreciate me in a second. And I don't get that's the sport my traits in. Yeah. 
So the key is making sure I'm in integrity in my dreams. I'm doing the right promises to keep me happy Mm -hmm. and designing every day like it mattered. Like I wasn't allowed to not be proud of myself or have scared myself or when I haven't just account for it. Yeah. Like I'm in the right sport. So it's like figuring out your sport to live every day. Like it's your last and it matters. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Moni. Um, I said it was going to be like 30 to 40 minutes. We've got <laughs> <one there. laughs> it's been, um, it's been, it's been a blast. It's been, um, a challenge. <laughs> I feel like I can go <laughs> and challenge myself with uh, some of those things and think about those problems. Right? Yeah. Yes, you should think of what your three to five are that yeah, would exactly. scare, scare you and make you really proud. Exactly. So thank you. Tell people how they can find out more about you and get in contact. If you go on handelgroup.com or interview.coach, you could go find us, go look up interview. You could find out all about our coaches. You could find me. You could get on our newsletter and read our blogs um, and check us out. We have lots of coaching on there. You could come to the free community calls. You could come have a glass of wine with me on Fridays, right? So just go look up community calls or wind down with Marnie or uh, where you could find us on Instagram. Handel group. Uh, so we're all over the place. So really find us. There's loads of free coaching and loads of uh, you could come and find out questions. You could uh, sign up for a free consultation and speak to a human about coaching and what's right, like the right fit for you and what yeah. you could afford. Because we really care about you. Like there is no this is not on like having living your dream. Have you go broke? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's not not our goal right no, is to no. just uh really teach like all of humanity to like human better uh-huh, uh-huh. at your own pace yeah yeah lovely thank you thanks for your time today you're so welcome thank you are you a home-based coach or consultant feeling like you need a bit of help our power to live more calm membership is designed to meet you where you're at with the help you need in the moment so you can get unstuck move forwards and get stuff done You might think this sounds too good to be true or maybe wondering how it would fit with how you work and run your business. Why not have a no obligation chat with Jo to see how she can help you? All you need to do is go to powertolivemore.com slash calm call. All this information is available in the show notes which you'll find either in your podcast app or you can go to the website at powertolivemore.com forward slash in this case 215. And this week's topic is email marketing. We talked at the Gold Members Call on Monday about how email marketing is still a useful tool, although you'll hear uh, many people say that email marketing is dead, Um, usually people who've just emailed you (laughs) to tell you that. We talked about how a regular newsletter can be helpful in building relationships and engaging with your list. And a top tip from me and also from Ashley, one of the members, is about making notes through the week as things come to you that you'd like to share with your audience and make that note so that you sort of have your newsletter half done when you finally get down to writing it because sometimes it's that whole procrastination thing of having a blank page or a blank email template uh, and not knowing what to put in it. So uh, it's good practice to make those notes as you go along. And certainly a good few years ago, I used to send two newsletters a week and always had tons of information to go in them because I was making notes as I went through the week of uh, ideas and inspiration to put in there. The other thing to think about is an autoresponder series, and that's for uh, new people to your list or people who've just uh, downloaded something specific. And you can depending on which email service you're using, you can trigger a whole series of autoresponders based on uh, actions that that person has taken. And that's where you set up a series of emails that, um, as I say, are triggered and it gives them information that they want over a period of time, as well as an introduction to you and what you do. And that just goes out automatically with a particular sort of gap between each of those emails. So you're not having to do them yourself each week as you would do with a broadcast newsletter. One thing to remember is that people who make email marketing work for them usually email often, maybe even daily. And I think sometimes as business owners, we sort of judge our audience by our own sort of perspective. And so we might sort of not email very often because we don't want to bother 
our list and we think that it might annoy them because we sort of think that's what happens to us. And, you know, I have to say there's quite a few people I have uh, whose mailing list that I'm on and they do email regularly and I, I'm not bothered and I either read what they've got because it's interesting or I ignore it and just delete it until the next one comes in. Uh, and it doesn't sort of make me want to unsubscribe from what they're sending as long as they're sending me good, useful stuff. But I, along with many other business owners, often think I won't email more often to my own list in case it annoys them. And um, I do think we probably ought to emulate others who are having success with their email marketing rather than holding ourselves back and not wanting to bother people. But obviously it's about getting that balance between what you're happy and comfortable doing and what your audience uh, are happy to, to receive. But I would say don't be frightened of unsubscribes. If people don't want to hear from you, then they're unlikely to come around at some stage to buying from you or recommending you to other people. So actually, if they're not on your list, you know, it's not uh, the end of the world because they're not going to take any action anyway. So probably best if they do unsubscribe. So don't be frightened of that or concerned about that. It's it's a bit like on social media when people say, you know, until you've upset people, uh, you're probably not standing for anything in particular. And, uh, and, you know, people having an opinion one way or the other, black and white about what you do is actually a good thing rather than just being sort of grey or vanilla or whatever um, metaphor we'd use to describe that. Uh, I think consistency is really important and that's of, you know, mes- messaging um, but also frequency, as I've already said, and actually sort of getting something out on a regular basis and finding a process that works for you to do that and keeping repeating it is key as far as that's concerned. We do have a little discussion about GDPR. And I said, really, if, if you're using a reputable email marketing company like Aweber, who I use, or MailChimp or one of the other providers, then you need to be explicit as to what people will get when they join your list. So what they're signing up for, usually a download and a regular newsletter. And ideally use double opt-in. So that's where they say, yes, please, I want to be on your list. Then they get sent an email to confirm again that they want to be on that list. And then you're fine because what they've basically done is demonstrated that they really do want to be on your list. Um, and you've you know given them that option with full knowledge of uh, what they were doing, if you like. And just finally, my recommended supplier I've mentioned on many occasions is Aweber. I have been uh, with them since about 2008, I think it is, and I've just stuck with them. And recently, they've really started to further develop what they offer and put some really great functionality in. And so I absolutely do recommend them and have done for a long time. I'm also an Aweber certified expert. So if you need any help with your setup, then please speak to me. Uh, you um, You can have a free account up to 500 subscribers and you get pretty much everything that they offer um, at that level including their 24-7 support so it's a really good offer if you go to joedodds.com forward slash recommends forward slash aweber then you can sign up there and give it a go and if you're looking for further help with your email marketing and list building then that's one of the areas that we cover within the power to live more calm membership and you can find out more about that at power to live more.com forward slash get calm Again, the show notes are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 215. And we look forward to speaking to you next week. Use your power to live more.